All right, I think we're going to go ahead and get started here. Again, want to thank everyone for attending. We should have a good webinar today. And uh, I want to take this time to, to welcome you to Scripting and Automation in Hyper-V without System Center Virtual Machine Manager. Uh, my name is Andy Sirwich. I'm kind of going to be acting as the, you know, roughly the facilitator today. Uh, with me is Thomas Maurer. He's going to be handling the, the bulk of the presentation. And uh, let's start by going through our agenda for this webinar today. First off, we're going to start with some introductions, uh, introduce uh, Thomas, myself, and uh, Altero Software. Then we're going to get into uh, really the, the meat of the presentation. Thomas is going to cover some data center automation, Hyper-V scripting basics, and some cool scripts for you to use in your own environments. After that, we're going to talk real briefly about uh, Altero VM Backup and a new uh, API that we have baked into the application that can be called PowerShell. And then at, the, at that point, we're going to do some, some Q&A. So with the Q&A, we've got a lot of material for this particular webinar. And what we're going to do is we're going to hold all the questions until the end. So feel free to ask questions throughout the length of, web, of the webinar, and then we'll come back and answer them toward the end uh, as far as, you know, as long as we've got time to do so. Uh, any questions that we don't get answered during the webinar today, we will answer via email afterwards. We want to make sure you get all your questions answered uh, and you get everything you need. So, <clears throat> with that in mind, let's move on to some introductions. Again, my name is Andy Sirwich. I am a technical evangelist for Altero Software and a uh, cloud and data center management MVP with Microsoft. I've been doing this whole IT thing for uh, a while now. Uh, I've worked all over the industry, all kinds of different industry verticals. Uh, I've worked for managed services providers. I've worked for internal IT departments. And that ranges from the SMB space all the way up to, to uh, you know, enterprise automotive manufacturing. Uh, so I've kind of seen this, that, and everything else. So over the last several, several years, I've been really focused on virtualization, uh, cloud services, and the Microsoft server stack with a, an emphasis on Hyper-V. Uh, but, you know, I, I have my feet in the VMware world as well, uh, and I also do some Linux and network security as well. So. Um, if you like to follow blogs, I blog regularly on the altero.com blog. That's www.altero.com slash hyper-v. And uh, for those people that like Twitter, there's my Twitter handle. Um, I'm sorry, you'll have to spell my last name. Uh, one of these days I'll get around to updating that, but uh, uh, you're going to have to spell my last name to follow me on Twitter. So at this point I'd like to introduce uh, Thomas Maurer, uh, and I'll let him go ahead and introduce himself. Thomas. Thanks, Andy. Thanks. So, welcome from my side as well. Uh, my name is Thomas Maurer. Um, I work as a cloud architect for ITnetics, which is a, a consulting and engineering company focused on Microsoft technologies in Switzerland. Um, we are working mostly with Microsoft Cloud Solution based on System Center, Windows Server, Hyper-V, uh, Microsoft Azure, and all that good stuff. We also have a workplace team. Um, which is uh, kind of does uh, Windows 10 and all the client stuff, mobile device management, things like that. So as my role um, in, in the company, I'm a cloud architect and I'm focused on all the fabric stuff. So this means I do a lot of virtualization, um, Azure stuff, Hyper-V, Windows Server storage and Windows Server networking, and of course, as I said, uh, a lot of uh, Azure Pack stuff as well. Uh, I'm a Microsoft MVP for Hyper-V for now, I think, four years it is. Uh, now moved to this cloud and data center management group. Uh, and probably you know my blog, uh, thomasmaurer.ch, or me on Twitter, Thomas Maurer, uh, where you can follow me. So basically that's it to me. Back to Andy. Thanks, Thomas. So real quick about uh, Altero Software. Altero Software is a fast-growing developer of some really awesome backup software, uh, specializing in virtualized environments. Uh, the focus is, is obviously, as you can see from the slide, the, the focus is on SMBs and medium-sized businesses, uh, strictly because we, we have a big focus on ease of use. Uh, we realize that not a lot of uh, small businesses have, you know, IT resources that can devote all their time to backup. So uh, we really focus on making our product as easy to use as possible uh, and provide some great features and great value in the product. If you'd like to take a look at uh, our flagship product, Altero VM Backup, uh, the URL is right there, www.altero.com slash VM Backup. And uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Thomas to uh, start talking about what you're all here to hear about today. 
Perfect. Thank you, Andy. Uh, let's start. Let's talk a little bit of data center automation. So, um, funny thing, uh, a couple of days ago, I saw this article on the web where uh, kind of a programmer uh, automated his job and uh, his colleagues realized that after after a few days he left. So they saw basically he wrote scripts to automate his job and also for example if he was working late uh, and he was still locked in at 7 o'clock in the evening uh, it was automatically sending a text to his wife and saying he was late, right? And they, he also, but this is kind of more fun now, he also had this script which was called Hangover. Uh, when he was not, he wasn't locked in at 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, the script was automatically sending uh, his colleagues uh, email which said basically, yeah, I'm not feeling well, um, I'm working from home today. So you can do a lot of cool stuff with data center automation, uh, not only the fun stuff, but you can also do uh, uh, great automation stuff and get uh, productivity up and running. So when I talk to customers, it's still, um, I can see a lot of customers not having a great automation in place. And basically that's because they're afraid uh, it takes too much time to get that up and running. And um, I always bring the same example. Uh, I was once visiting a customer for a Hyper-V project and um, we did some setup of VMM and we did some automation part, uh, some setup parts on Hyper-V and storage and everything. And we had a half a day left and he told me that uh, deploying a new server for, for our new VM <laughs> takes up to a day because uh, one has to go manually create that virtual machine and they had basically this checklist uh, with all the install and configuration steps for that virtual machine. So basically it took them one day to deploy a new virtual machine and another big problem was that um, all the virtual machines which were rolled out looked kind of different because in some virtual machines an admin forgot to do a checkbox or to simply configure something. They just forgot about it and so they always had this kind of inconsistency between virtual machines. So we still had a half a day left at the end of my, my job and so I told them, yeah, let's do some templates and let's, let's create some automation uh, to make your life easier and let's just start with that list you have and to, let's see how far we go. Uh, and basically we invested three to four hours uh, and after that we were like finished with the whole automation process. So now the, the one day VM creation process uh, takes him like 20 to 30 minutes to get the VM up and running with all the configuration tasks. So that's a great example for um, how fast you can uh, uh, you can uh, automate something, and how far and and how much you benefit from that, right? So Microsoft offers you some tools to get auto uh, get uh, automated to to automate your data center. One of them, as we said, Virtual Machine Manager, which is basically kind of the vCenter. Um, from VMware in the Microsoft world, but it also does, does some other cool stuff like fabric management. And Microsoft also has a tool called Orchestrator, which is formerly known as Opalis. Uh, and, and some new kind of version for, for Orchestrator is kind of service management automation or SMA. And they also have something up in Azure, which you can use um, also on-prem, but I will I talk to, to that in a couple of minutes. So first of all, System Center Virtual Machine Manager, of course we are not here to talk about <laughs> System Center Virtual Machine Manager, but just to give you a little bit of an overview of what System Center Virtual Machine uh, Manager for you can do. So as I said, you can do create templates, you can manage your fabric, you can automate host deployments and all that kind of good of that stuff uh, to get your life easier. But of course, System Center comes with that extra cost and that's not like everybody wants it, right? So you. you if you want to save some money, you probably not have System Center. You cannot go for that, uh, and there's there's PowerShell is a good uh, solution for that one. If you want to do some advanced automation, not only based on virtualization, but maybe other parts in your data center, uh, System Center Orchestrator is or was a great tool uh, to do automation on that. So basically, what it what it is is kind of a Visio style editor where you can. Uh, use uh, tasks and, and cut them together. So for example, in that example, you monitor uh, for a SCOM alert, and if that SCOM alert is here, uh, you probably get a service status and restart a service and things like that, which is like uh, programming in Visio or something like that, or scripting in Visio. And then Microsoft did some new engine, some new automation engine uh, called SMA, 
And what that does is basically, it's a, I call it a task schedule for PowerShell workflows. So what you do is you create these PowerShell workflows, which are called runbooks uh, when you're using it, and you can automate that stuff and you can use that runbooks to, you can schedule them, you can fire them up, you have input parameters and things like that, and you can all do the fun stuff you can do with PowerShell workflows. So that's really helpful. But also a great addition here is if you have Azure Pack, um, you can you can leverage that. So for example, you can link to actions. So for example, if a customer creates a virtual machine, you can automatically say, okay, if a new virtual machine is created, let's start that runbook. So we use that, for example, uh, to configure Hyper-V Replica. Uh, so if a customer creates a new virtual machine, uh, it automatically sets up Hyper-V Replica, so you have this disaster recovery things in place. Uh, and then you also have uh, Azure Automation, which lifts up in Azure, um, but there's this cool, cool thing called Hybrid Worker, which is basically an agent you can install on a virtual machine or host um, inside your data center and you can start run books and run them on that uh, VM or host uh, and it will um, uh, run those scripts inside your data center. So that's good automation here as well. Um, what I just want to show you here is all the things here I just showed you is based on PowerShell, right? So all the new cool stuff you can do uh, is based on PowerShell scripts, PowerShell workflows and everything. So even if you're not using one of those tools today, and you're doing everything with PowerShell, you're fine with that. You don't lose anything. You just can migrate your PowerShell code uh, inside one of those tools uh, later on, or you can also do it just without, with, with just with PowerShell code, of course. So let me talk about a little bit about um, scripting basics here uh, for Hyper-V. So first of all, uh, the PowerShell module uh, or the, for Hyper-V was introduced in Windows Server 2012 and Windows 8. Um, this is kind of the first version which had an official PowerShell module for, um, uh, for Hyper-V. Uh, everyone who was playing with Windows Server 2000 and 2008, R2, uh, 2008 and 2008 R2 uh, and did some core setup, for example, or tried to automate uh, Hyper-V and other things knew that there were not a lot of modules available and things were kind of hard, right? So with that, that was the foundation for everything. Uh, there were some third-party solutions, of course, but the real good stuff comes with Windows Server 2012 and later. Uh, and I will show you a little bit more in a couple of, minutes, of seconds. So another cool thing I want to talk just briefly because it's very new and it's very hot topic is Windows Server 2016. Uh, <laughs> 2016, yeah. So there's a new feature called PowerShell Direct. And what PowerShell Direct allows you to do is um, running PowerShell commands or scripts from your host um, directly into a virtual machine. Not using the network or PowerShell remoting, it uses the virtual machine bus um, to run those scripts inside. So this is really cool, uh, especially for automation. If you have to do set up something and um, you're probably not you don't want to rely on your network and things like that, you can just like create a VM and do some automation stuff uh, using PowerShell Direct, but I will show you that. So let's show you some demos here. Let's go through that. Um, that's a very simple part here. Let me switch here. Uh, I have here my PowerShell console open, and let's see. Uh, if, I, if I go to um, list all the modules here, get PowerShell modules um, list available, so I get all the PowerShell modules I can see on my system here. And as you can see, I get a lot here. Uh, for, for example, also from Azure and other things, but I get some intros here. And as you can see, we have two PowerShell modules here. One is called uh, Hyper-V version 2 and one is called 1.1. .1. Um, this is basically the, the both Hyper-V um, PowerShell module. One of them is for the later versions, Windows 10 and Windows Server 2016, this version 2. And one version one is here, so you have still have compatibility to uh, all the versions of Hyper-V, right? So let me show you what's in there, in that modules. So what we can do is um, we can say get command module Hyper-V count. And I see you can see uh, we have like right now we have on my Windows 10 system here I have 217. Um, PowerShell commandlets which are for Hyper-V or which are in this, this module. Um, 
And if you want to have a look at them, there is some cool stuff as well. Let me get get command module hyper-v. And to make it a little bit more, we can use out grid view. And you can see, you get all the list of all the PowerShell commands you have. Um, and you can see, you can basically do everything with using PowerShell. Of course, you cannot do everything, but most of the admin task you do is basically covered in PowerShell. So let me switch here back. Um, if you're starting with that, so if you're starting with PowerShell and everything, you have to get the help, right? And what you can do is, uh, first of all, you do an update help, so you get the latest help files for your PowerShell modules here. But I'm not going to do that because that takes a while. I've already done that. So what I want to do is uh, get help for a specific Hyper-V module, and this is called um, get virtual machine, for example, or get VM. So I can see I get the, the help for that virtual machine, uh, for that commandlet. I can see what I can do, which syntax I, I'm using, and things like that. And also some interesting things I can do. Examples. Now for get virtual machine, this is very simple, right? But um, for other commandlets, that can be useful. I can see all the all the commandlets here. Um, I can see how they works there for some examples. And if you want to have some more details, you can also use the slash online uh, switch, which basically creates, uh, which opens your browser and you get all that online information on that specific commandlet. That's really useful for if you didn't know about that. So what I can do now, let's use that command letter. I can see, so if I have my Hyper-V host here, or my Hyper-V setup, so I have one VM running and I have four virtual machines here. Um, I can also show that in PowerShell. So I can use get virtual machine and I get all that information about the virtual machines here. I can also do some filtering here. Let's say get virtual machine where state equals running, for example. So this would only list the running virtual machines, and of course I can also do that uh, for all the virtual machines which are offline. Um, that's very cool as well. So I get all those virtual machines, and I can also do some, some filtering based on, for example, names. So if I want to get all the um, servers which are called something with nano servers, so I can say, okay, I'm star nano something. So I only get the nano server virtual machines. Um, you can see how where, where this is going, right? So very simple stuff, very easy to do, and it can help a lot for a lot of scripts. So as you can see, you get some information here, but that's, of course, not everything. Let's say I want to have some more information on that virtual machine. I go to Nano 1. As you can see, it's still the same thing. But now there is more behind it. So I can do a select star. So this gives me all the... Um, information out for all the for the whole power, for the whole object or for the whole virtual machine in that case. So if I run that, you can see I get some more information, which is kind of interesting. And if I go here, I see the memory status. I see, for example, replication rep, hyper-e replica. Sorry about that here. I can see which hard drives. I can see the size, how many CPUs, and things like that. So I can see all that kind of stuff. What I can also do is I can set stuff, of course, and I, most of the time I use pipe. So what I could do is here, I could go here and say, okay, uh, set VM and then use the VM uh, and give it, give it the name of the VM, etc. But most of the time what I do is I use um, get VM to get the, the right VM so I know it's the right one. And then I can use the set VM using pipe and do some changes. And Here's something I want to show you, which is new in PowerShell v5. So, get set VM has a lot of parameters here. So, if you if you're familiar, just do the the line here, and then you press tab, and you get all the things. But it can take a while to get through that. And there are several ways to show you that, but the cool new thing is using Control and Shift. In that case, oh sorry about that. Oh, press the button. Control and Shift. Uh, you get all the information here, so you can see what you could do here, uh, all the different parameters for that commandlet. And in my case, I will use notes, which is very simple, right? Oh, sorry about that. So notes, I can set the note here that PowerShell is very cool. Let's do this and let's run that. And 
Well, that's okay. So I can get that and I can use that. But now let's see in the UI, I can get that information if I go to settings, for example, um, get that here on the name. I can see I have set PowerShell is very cool here in the in the notes field. Of course, I can also edit all other stuff. I can like give it more uh, virtual CPUs and more memory and things like that. Uh, very, very easy. So for one VM, that's probably not that cool, right? It's it's a thing you can do, but for multiple VMs, if you want to set the memory for multiple VMs, that's very cool. So that's it. That's to that point. Um, I can also start and stop VMs, of course, but I want to show you now is the PowerShell Direct feature, which is kind of new. And um, let me see. I have a server here. Uh, basically, this is a this is server one. It's just running inside a VM. Uh, nothing special here. If I go to the network here, I can see they have a I have a virtual network adapter and it's connected to the network and everything is fine. But now um, I can use PowerShell Direct to um, connect into that virtual machine. Let me switch here to PowerShell to the integrated scripting environment, which is basically the much. Uh, it probably doesn't look that cool as the console, uh, especially when you make it black background with green. Uh, font, but um, it's definitely a tool you should definitely use to, to go there. So I told you about, um, the, uh, about PowerShell Direct. So instead of using, for example, dash computer name, you can use dash VM name for several kind of tasks like invoke command or enter PS session. I also created that object with the credentials for that virtual machine. And what I'm doing here is I'm connecting inside those virtual machine using um, um, using PowerShell Direct with the credential and I'm getting all the services running in that or which are in that virtual machine. So let me run that this one. So it connects now over the VM bus and it gives me all the all the services here. Well this is pretty cool but you can do, of course do the same thing uh, using PowerShell remoting over the network, which is not a bad thing, right? But you could still do the same. But now uh, a user, for example, goes here and disables the network adapter, right? So if I'm doing now, I would do PowerShell remoting, that wouldn't work anymore. So let me switch back here, um, go to that here. Uh, I can still go and still connect here. I have another same thing. I just get the network adapter and get the name here in that case, um, which is great, right? So I get the okay, get it here, so you can see um, the Ethernet adapter uh, on server one. But now it would be cool. I, of course, I can do something else as well. I can also enable that network adapter, of course, again. So if something is broken, uh, I can fix it even without using PowerShell. Uh, remoting um, over the network, I can use that on my Hyper-V host. Let's run that script. So I'm going to enable that network adapter again, and as you can see inside my virtual machine, the network adapter is enabled again. So very cool feature, not only for troubleshooting, but also to automate setup things, right? So you can automate in that virtual machine, you can configure IP addresses and all that kind of good stuff uh, you can do. So let me switch back to the slides here. Uh, and now I'm going to show you a little bit advanced. I know that was kind of basic, so I know there are a lot of good PowerShell guys who are maybe also listening to that. So you think, what's about, oh, yeah, that's just basic stuff, right? Um, well, I have some cool scripts. Well, they are not that um, fancy as well. We start very slowly, but we will, we will show you some extra stuff here as well. Um, one of the things which I think I picked the, the example which um, will be the most used example, I guess, is create a new virtual machine. So this script here um, does basically create a new virtual machine. It creates a new virtual machine, it copies the VHD from a source to a destination, uh, it adds those the, the virtual hard disk to that virtual machine, uh, it does some additional, sets some additional properties for memory, for example, or CPU, uh, and then it starts the virtual machine. Very simple script um, to do that. So let me show you that quickly. Uh, even it's very simple, I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm switching here to my Hyper-V host, which is running Windows Server 2016. And as you can see, I have several VMs running here as well. Uh, I prepared also some stuff here. So if I go to 
my um, drive for the virtual machines. As you can see, there is one virtual machine running on that drive, and I have a source where I have virtual hard disk, and I have a nano server VHD here. Uh, I use the nano server VHD because it's very small, so the copy process doesn't take that long, but if you look at it, it will be very fast, but I didn't really expect that because I'm using another file system here. I will show you that in a second. That was a cool side effect during building that demo. So what I'm doing here is, uh, let me quickly go here. Um, I'm configuring here the VM name, uh, the source is the virtual switch name or the path where the virtual machine should be stored. Um, let's run this one. And um, then first thing I do is creating the virtual machine. Uh, nothing special, it's also connected to that virtual switch. I get the virtual machine. If you have a look at the Hyper-V manager, the virtual machine is now here. Nothing special at all. And now I'm copying uh, this source VHD file um, to that folder I'm just created because I have a new VM folder here. And I want to have that hard disk, of course, inside that folder. So I use that copy command to do so. And then, I have, of course, I have to attach those VHD to that virtual machine. And have you seen how fast the copy process was? It was so fast. It was because it's two things. Um, I used a nano server image, which is only around 400 to 500 megabytes. And the other thing here is I'm, I don't have any fancy hardware here. But I'm using REFS, which is the new file system for virtual machines in the future. Uh, and it has this. Um, this, this fast copy thing. So if I copy a virtual a file, it does not really do a copy job, it just makes the blocks available in the new place. So that's really done by the file system. It's really fast uh, and can have some great impact here. Kind of ODX if you're familiar with that on storage layer. So let's attach that um, VHD to that hard disk. Okay, that's good. Let's do some extra configuration changes. Um, some of the configuration uh, can't re you can't really do it during uh, the, the new VM command line. Not all properties are here, but of course you can also use that set command to, to do all the changes. A little, a little bit more RAM, for example, let's configure dynamic memory and things like that. Uh, now the VM is, uh, is ready to go, right? We have the VM here. Uh, everything is configured as planned. If we have a look at the settings, we can see that now the, the VHD is attached and everything. Uh, let's start our VM. And we can see the VM is now starting. And since this is, this is a new setup, right? But it, since this is a nano server VM, it takes only a couple of seconds uh, to do the whole initial install process and the VM is here. Well, you might say that's not something which is really fancy, but it's very simple to do, right? Uh, but let's say someone orders uh, multiple VMs from you. So, if, for example, you have a customer who says, okay, we need a new setup. We need like six or seven new virtual machines. Um, you can set that up. So, I have this script here, which basically just creates uh, loops through from for one to four uh, and loops four times and creates four virtual machines for me. So I use the same code. I just use that write uh, host to make it some color things so you can see what's going on. Um, just a quick note here for the PowerShell experts here. Um, I'm using write host here because I want to just have some color output here. But if you want to do that write and you want to probably send that to a log file or want to use that write, that, that information a little bit more, you should not use write host. You probably should use uh, um, right output, which is much more the better way. But um, for to get it, you can do callers and things like that with right host. So that's why I'm using that one. Okay, let's start that script. And what the script does, it does basically the same thing, but it does it four times in that case. So you can see it creates VM1. And if we switch here a little bit, you can see uh, all the VMs coming up. Uh, Quickly go. You can see it creates VM1, 2, 3, and 4, and it also starts them at the end, and you can see I've now uh, created uh, four new virtual machines with that very, very small script, right? It's nothing special, it's nothing really fancy, it's nothing we need 100 lines of code, it's very, very simple scripting, but it helps you a lot if you have to create a lot of virtual machines. So that's basically it. 
to creating virtual machines. Now, um, to prepare that, of course, let me switch back here. Uh, you have to have this VHD already configured. So what you do is you create a new VM, uh, you install operating system, and you do a sysprep in that VM. You shut it down, and you can copy that VHD, and you can use it um, for other sys uh, for for other VMs. Then um, just quickly deploy that one. So okay, that was the demo about creating VMs. So we have some other stuff which is really handy. Uh, it's not that. Um, this is really killer, but it's it's a lot of people use it. So it's very simple. This is kind of the magic one-liners here. We start with some one-liners, or with, in that case, it's a three-liner, but uh, some really simple stuff to do just to show you how easy it is. So, for example, uh, you probably all know that you have to. You bought two years ago. You bought two Hyper-V hosts um, with the with the hardware which, which was available then, and now you're buying a new. Uh, Hyper-V host, you add it to the cluster and you have a new CPU generation and you want to still migrate VMs from one host to the other. So you have this flag called the CPU compatibility mode, uh, which you can set and you have to go do that on every VM. So in that case, with that script, but be careful here, it gets all the VMs and stops all the VMs. Then it gets all the VMs and sets the VM processor compatibility mode <laughs> to one, uh, enables that and starts the VMs again. So, for example, if you have like 20, 30, or 50 virtual machine, instead of going through the list, uh, clicking on that, um, this is an easy way to go. And of course, you can also use that for other things as well. I mean, you can just replace the set VM processor here uh, to something else, right? So you could, like, let's say, let's do some configuration changes on memory, and you can also do it instead of the star here value for the get VM. You could probably use some name here or name star or something like that. Let's for example, uh, every every VM with the name SQL in it, or you can also use some CSV files as an input of a list and things like that. That's everything you can do. Then another handy script which I got and which I use uh, use sometimes for troubleshooting. This is one script from Michael Ruffley, which also works at the same company as I do. Um, this is the get MAC address of a VM. So. If you're not using a management tool like Systems Center Virtual Machine Manager, for example, this can be really tough. So you get a call from your network admins, and he basically says yeah, that one of the virtual machines is causing you trouble, and this is the MAC address, and now good luck finding those, this virtual machine. So th again, it's a very simple one-liner here. It's, uh, you could also use it as a one-liner here. I have three lines here, but you can also use it as a one-liner. So what it does, it goes to a specific Hyper-V host. It gets the net, all the network adapters from the VMs. It looks the MAC address up, so it says, OK, uh, which is the MAC address? And then it gives me the output, the VM name, the MAC address, and the IP address. So this is really cool to troubleshoot um, uh, if you have to find that virtual machine which is causing you troubles and you only have the MAC address um, or you have like duplicated MAC addresses for example, VMs have the same MAC addresses, uh, this is a cool way to find it if you don't have anything else in place. right? And again, it's very simple, nothing fancy, um, you can do that really quickly just using some simple built-in PowerShell commandlets. Something else I use a lot um, in, in, in when I do deployments, especially POCs, is a kind of a script which does storage migrate or live storage migrate VMs from one volume or from one file share or one cluster shared volume to another one. Right? So in this case, I definitely I set it up so there is a new file share. Uh, uh, this could also be like C cluster storage or this could be like the D drive or whatever, uh, but in this case it's a file share. So I get all the virtual machines, and what I'm using here is uh, a for each loop. So for those who haven't used uh, loops here, uh, a for each loop, especially in automation, is really, really key. So what it does is basically it gets all the VMs, and it says for every VM object in that VMs variable, it do the following code. So it goes here, it says, OK, the first, start with the first VM, uh, let's create a new uh, storage path here, which is basically the storage path I entered here, and let's put in the name of the VM. And then it says, we have again here a write host, so I see what's going on on the screen. Uh, if you do an automation on that in long term, you probably want to use the write output again. And then do the actual move. So move VM storage, the VM name, and the destination um, path here, 
which is also every time it's created new uh, running that for each loop. So it does that for all the VMs I get with get VM. And of course I can I showed you the filter uh, I did with get VM. So I can say only the names with nano, only the names with SQL, um, or where to have more disks than one or something like that. So this is basically how you can do a storage migration here. Uh, it's very useful and consider the, the for each loop, that's something you really have to consider if you do some uh, bunch of automation here. Another example now, which is not based on VMs, but is based on setting up a Hyper-V host. Uh, again, uh, if you set up a, um, a Windows server and you have multiple network adapters, you probably have the issue um, that that you can um, that all the order or the names of the network adapters are always different, right? There's a new feature called consistent device naming, uh, but you have to have the hardware to support that. But what else would you do if you're uh, you, the normal thing? People go to the data center, plug in, plug out the network adapter, so they can see which one it is and, and can name it, right? So I think a lot of people, including me, have already done that, but um, you can also sort them by using uh, the, the bus ID and the function ID. So then you have always the same order of that physical host. And I'm using there a command like get, get net adapter hardware info, uh, and I use the sort command to sort that in the right order for me. Um, and then what I'm also doing is a prefix, um, which is called nick in that case, or so all the networks adapter are called nick something. I set the number, the starting number here, and I'm using a for each here again. Okay, before, but I could like go for one hundreds of a good examples here and, and showing you how you can do that. But when I was preparing that, I saw that um, I actually found on the Altaro page they have this great uh, Altaro block and this Altaro Hyper V Hub, which there is uh, I think around five MVPs or people are blogging about it, about how you can get the best things out of Hyper-V. There's also this section called Hyper-V and PowerShell. And as you can see, there are a lot of really good blog posts, how you can do things um, uh, directly on that blog. So I am really encourage you to, to go on that blog and check it out. You can find a lot of great examples. For example, if you want to configure the VM auto start action, um, for your virtual machines, you get a lot of uh, examples here, uh, all about checkpoints and things like that. So there are a lot of great examples uh, which you can use for the day-to-day -day move. And then I want to highlight something else, and it's uh, something from Jeffrey Hicks. Uh, he's also blogging for Altero as well, and he created something really cool which I use a lot. And I also have seen an, a Microsoft consulting uh, consultants using that on customer sites because it's such a great tool. It's called the Hyper-V Health Report. And this is based on PowerShell, right? So what it basically does, it checks your um, Hyper-V environment and creates you that health report. So it gets all the data in. For example, it gets you uh, the cluster, the network adapters, the storage paths, all the VMs, the configuration of the VMs. It creates you that great HTML um, report so you can see everything uh, on one list and you can see if something probably is not good or something is, is wrong. Uh, you also have some documentation here, right? So you could run it like now and you can run it in two months and you can see what's going on, what has changed and everything. Uh, and it's a really great tool. Not only to do the health report, but it also helps you a little bit because it tracks so many information, so much information uh, out of your environment. So if you have troubles figuring something out to get some information, in that script you can basically find everything, how it's done, how where you find the right and the correct value to that. Uh, and it's a very cool tool, you can check it out on altero.com slash um, health report and it's a very cool tool to do that. Okay, so with that um, I'm switching back to Andy um, for his presentation, for his part again, because Altero did some great stuff on automation as well. Sounds good. Thanks, Thomas. Appreciate the insight, and uh, that, that was some good stuff. So, uh, I mentioned earlier we were going to take a little time here to talk about Altero VM Backup. You know, I kind of mentioned some of the stuff in the intro slide. You know, the big focus of Altero VM Backup is ease of use, um, designed for SMB 
ERPs designed for medium-sized businesses. Uh, and it, it's highly capable software as well in that we do offer some advanced functionality like uh, off-site replication with WAN acceleration and uh, exchange and, and file level restores as well, just as an example. Um, it does scale pretty well. Uh, it uh, provides central and remote management capabilities for larger environments. And then the big thing that uh, I'm very proud of myself is the outstanding support that uh, we offer here at El Terrell. Our support guys uh, do a great job day in and day out, and uh, they really are all Hyper-V and VMware experts. Uh, that way they can provide uh, that high level of service that uh, we expect to provide to our customers. So with that said, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, our, our Altero VM backup API. So we spent a lot of time today talking about uh, scripting and automation, right? Well, uh, Altero, we have developed uh, a set of RESTful APIs that can be used for product integration, dashboards, uh, querying uh, the Altero service for various items. Uh, and even though it's a RESTful API, it can be called and utilized by a collection of PowerShell commandlets that we ship with the product. So, you know, from an IT pro perspective, it makes, you know, we're, we're more used to issuing a PowerShell command or coming up with a script uh, that, you know, does something for us. And as you can see, that the collection of scripts is right here on, uh, on, the, on the slide. And this is just a portion of them. We can do some things like uh, aborting operations. We can uh, add virtual machines to schedules. We can define backup locations. Uh, we can get the status of running jobs. Uh, all kinds of, of various things with, uh, with the scripting API. <clears throat> Next slide, please. And uh, as far as use cases goes, uh, we, we've come up with a couple of, of use cases that we think are going to be useful for, for people. A uh, big one being backup reporting and operations. Uh, you know, you could easily make a script uh, inside of PowerShell that would, would query the Altero service and report back on various items within the environment. Uh, we also see this being used for the creation of dashboards. Uh, I see this especially useful for data centers and MSPs. Uh, creation of, a, da uh, creation of a, a dashboard to display various information about the backup environment. And then uh, this last one I find really useful, especially from my days working for a managed services provider. Um, a lot of times, you know, with a managed services provider, they're responsible for customer backups. And a lot of times when you have a customer that has uh, some sort of on-premise IT uh, presence, uh, you'll have uh, on-premise administrators adding virtual machines to the environment and not notifying the MSP. Well, you could create a script that occasionally scans the environment for any new virtual machine that's not protected and add it to backups and add it to backup locations. So some very useful stuff here, uh, especially when we're talking about scripting and autom automation inside of our environments. Uh, if you're interested in looking at that in any more detail, we have some official documentation out on our website at altero.com slash API. And then uh, if you're interested in trying out our product at all, uh, we've got a free 30-day trial, full featured, uh, that you can try out at altero.com slash download. Uh, after the 30 days, it is free for up to two VMs forever. So if you're interested, go ahead and uh, go out there, download it, give it a try. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know or feel free to let the support desk know. We're happy to help at any time. And, uh, Hope you enjoy. So at this point, I'd like to open it up for Q&A. Uh, I've got a couple of questions here that I've got marked down already. Um, one of the big ones that I've, I've seen a couple people ask about, Thomas, is um, versioning. So if I have, uh, you know, a, a certain version of PowerShell, uh, let's, let's, for example, let's say we have the, the latest version of PowerShell. Is it fully backwards compatible and forwards compatible with other versions of Windows Server? Uh, that's a good question, some things. But as I said, there are two versioning, uh, two versions of the Hyper-V PowerShell module. And there are also, of course, different versions of PowerShell. So not every commandlet or every function or every parameter is working in every version. So what you can do in your scripts is you can, re, um, at, at the beginning of a script, you can like get the PowerShell version and say uh, what, which version is required. So for example, if you have a, a script done for PowerShell version 4 uh, and you run it on a, uh, a Hyper-V host or on a Windows server uh, where you only have PowerShell version 3 installed, um, 
uh, it says, okay, that doesn't work, it, it won't run that script, and because you have the wrong version, right? So you have to be careful with that. Uh, as far as Hyper-V, uh, right now there are two, two basically two versions. Um, the old one, <laughs> which I would say it's the old one, which is the 2012 and 2012 R2 one, and there is this new one uh, for Windows 20, uh, 2016, right? Uh, and Basically, what you do if you run it on Windows 10 or Windows Server 2016, you're automatically using the new one and you have to switch to your old one if you want to. Um, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sounds good. Um, another question I have here, more of a use case question. So, for an example, let's say uh, you have a collection of servers and uh, the UPS that they're plugged into uh, goes onto UPS power. So, you know, the, the premises is lost power. Um, is it possible to fashion a script that would, that would that recognize that the UPS is on backup and would begin shutting down um, the VMs in a specific order? You know, I could see the VM, so the, the UPS software being used for that. Um, but uh, what about PowerShell? You think that's a possible use case? Well, definitely. Well, the interesting thing was added at the end, right? I mean, um, uh, as, as you said, there's probably a software which is doing the, all, the, all of that for you. Uh, but the interesting part would here be uh, to do that in a specific order. So uh, in that case, PowerShell would clearly be a solution. The only thing I can see is like it could be hard to find um, like the information that this uh, script has to start, right? So you have to be somehow connect to the U, uh, to that U is, uh, to that to the soft piece of software, or you have that piece of software triggering a script. So uh, that's probably the pro most pro problematic part, but everything else definitely can do. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Good deal. Um, are there any recommendations on uh, script libraries for getting weekly and daily diagnostics from VMs on a, a set of hosts? Well, it's, it depends a little bit about what, what diagnosis you want to have. My, I mean, it, normally when you have a monitoring solution or something like that uh, in place, that should basically do that as well. But I can absolutely agree that um, you probably want to have a kind of a report, right? Um, maybe that's that's the thing here. Uh, and as I said, there is this health report. This not, does not only check the Hyper-V environment, it also checks the virtual machines um, which were running. Um, there are a lot of cool things you can do, uh, which I did. Um, for example, is a script which does a daily monitoring action on VM checkpoints. So it checks the, all the virtual machines on the Hyper-V cluster or in the whole Hyper-V environment and lists all the checkpoints and sends me an email uh, which virtual machine still has a checkpoint. And so I know that I get in the morning, I don't have to check everything through it. I just see that email and I can say, okay, two VMs have still have a checkpoint. VM1, that's okay, that's fine. But VM2, okay, I have to check why there is a checkpoint left, right? And things like that. But probably you have some good resources except for the health uh, report. Yep, yep. That uh, lots of options there. It sounds like based on the on the use case needed. Uh, let's see. One other question that I've got here from a, a couple of folks is just kind of a, a basics question. I'm still learning PowerShell. Uh, are there any good resources that uh, that you could recommend that kind of help to learn the basics? Uh, any of that? Any out there that you're aware of, Thomas? Um, what I would definitely recommend is uh, Microsoft Virtual Academy. Um, this is this is a, a, a video portal, more or less, where Microsoft has these uh, courses online, which is mostly like you have this one-hour training sessions, and basically it's most of the time it's like eight hours, uh, so you can like go for it, watch one hour every day or something, and you they also have some good PowerShell resources there. They not only have PowerShell, they also have that for other Microsoft technologies out there. And if you're looking for something specific, um, I mean, there are a lot of great resources on the web, some good PowerShell blogs out there, uh, and especially, as I mentioned, the Altaro Hyper-V blog here. Um, they have some, they, they always do that great stuff on, on there, uh, and, and 
you can find a lot of great examples how things are done. But if you want to get started, I would really recommend you uh, go to the Microsoft Virtual Academy and watch there. There's, I think there's a jump start for PowerShell or something like that. All right. Um, just for the people still in the room, we've got uh, a couple more minutes here for questions. We'll ask a couple more. And any questions that we don't get to, we'll be sure to follow up. Uh, with emails and uh, we'll post some out on the blog uh, in the coming weeks as well. So uh, I've got another question here, Thomas, about PowerShell Direct. Um, does it work with Windows Server 2008 R2 as a virtual machine? So it sounds like the guest VM is running 2008 R2 and they're wondering if, if you can use PowerShell Direct to push commands into a 2008 R2 VM. Um, as far as I know, it only works with Windows Server 2016 virtual machines and hosts. So you have to be on that level. Um, I'm not quite 100% sure on that um, uh, because I'm, I'm always a little bit in trouble what works with which version, but I guess it's 2016. Okay. Uh, let's see, another question that we've got here. Um, okay, so uh, let, let's say, uh, let's say the, the viewers take some of the stuff that they learned in this, in this webinar and they go back to their environments and they put some scripts in place in the environments and uh, get some basic automation up and running. And then let's say one day they do get the, the budget to go out and install uh, System Center Virtual Machine Manager in their environment. Uh, is there any concern in VMM conflicting with any of the scripts that they put in place? Well, that's a very good question and there is no yes or no answer. Uh, it always depends a little bit on what are you doing. But with most of the stuff, you're totally fine to still use that. Um, but there is always some kind of stuff um, which can hurt a little bit in a VMM environment. So uh, for most of the stuff, it will be fine, like moving VMs and things like that. Um, if you doing things with, for example, network virtualization, uh, you probably should not do that inside PowerShell if you're using VMM for that, right? So that's, a, that's somewhere where you, can, where you can get a little bit of confusion here. And my recommendation would be, um, I mean, you can still use the, the scripts here, but if you start with Virtual Machine Manager, you should use the Virtual Machine Manager PowerShell module to do that. So everything should be done or most of the parts should be done through um, virtual machine manager, so you don't run into troubles here. Uh, that's that's definitely something uh, which I would recommend. But for most of the PowerShell um, scripts, I don't see a problem here. Right, right. I wouldn't think it. I wouldn't think it too difficult to go through your uh, script repository and update uh, all the scripts for VMM um, once that happens. I, I wouldn't think that'd be too hard anyway. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. So. Okay, well, I think at this point, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap things up. And just a reminder to uh, the folks that, uh, you know, if you had a question that didn't get answered, we will be uh, answering it uh, later on via email and some blog posts. And uh, stay tuned. Again, thank you for attending. Uh, thank you to Thomas for giving us all this great information today. And uh, hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day. Thank you much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.